When users come to your website, what do they actually want? Well, they kind of already tell you by using something called the internal search. And luckily with Google Analytics, we are able to analyze what they have searched for on our website. So today our GA expert Pavel is gonna show you how to set up the internal search feature for Google Analytics and gain insights from the reports that come out of that data. Now we got lots to cover, so Pavel, take it away. Thanks, Julian. Hello everyone, this is Pavel and today's topic is internal search data. Let's dig in and let's start with explanation of what do we mean by internal search data. We are again on uh, Google's official merchandise store and the first thing I would like to show you is how to set up internal search measurement. First thing first, so what do I mean by internal search element? Uh, many websites do have it uh, and in the case of Google Merchandise Store is this one, uh, which means by clicking here on that icon, I see a pop-up window where I can type a keyword. So let's type, for example, hoodie. And if I click on the go, if I'm lucky enough, I should see relevant results. Perfect. Uh, yeah, you can see there's a couple of them. And here comes the question, how Google Analytics can get this uh, data about what uh, users are searching for on our website. It's actually very easy. Most of the websites use the very simple principle, which is uh, pushing a searched keyword into URL address. And this is also exactly the case. We can see that uh, keyword or search term hoodie is also here in the URL address after the parameter keyword. It's keyword equals hoodie. And this is exactly the principle based on which Google Analytics also takes this data. So all we have to do in order to start measure that is to know after which parameter in the in the URL address is search term. So in this case, it's keyword. Now going to Google Analytics to show how to set it up. Um, it means we have to go to admin section, going to view settings, and here, if we scroll down a bit, we'll see a part about site search tracking. So the first thing we have to turn on is to turn on the site search tracking module, which is by clicking here. And then the second thing is to uh, set up a query parameter after which uh, we have search term. Uh, so in this case, it's, it's um, in our case here, uh, it was keyword. And we can see that the Google Merchandise Store have keywords, so plural of that, uh, which is wrong. So it means that basically right now it's not collecting the relevant data, but it was collecting the data in, in the past. So this is what we will show then. So this is this is all we have to do when it comes to set up on Google Analytics site. If we would click then on the done from that moment on, it would start collecting uh, the data and we would see them in GA interface reports. So that was it. Uh, when it comes to the data it collects, we have to go to behavior reports, then to site search, which, which is dedicated to that, and then clicking on the usage. So first thing I want to show you right now that uh, it's not collecting the data because there is a wrong parameter from URL address. So if I will now just change the date range to actual year and click apply, that first report where we are usage, as you probably uh, um, know, it, it means that what's the volume of the sessions that use site search and the volume of sessions which do not use site search. And as we can see, it's only or the report tells that during the, the, the first three months of, of uh, this year, there was only 10 sessions which used that uh, that uh, particular particular element on the website, which is definitely not true. There has to be uh, much more of them. So if I will right now just go back to the year 2016 when the data were co uh, correct and scrolling back, uh, we can see that it's not just 10 of them, but uh, more than 10,000. So this is the, the, the first uh, data we can have. Uh, it gives us the sensitivity for how many people is that element relevant and how many of them are using it. And, and the first information we have here, okay, it's about 5%. Okay, what to do with that? Uh, the interesting part comes when is when we scroll to the very right side. I will show you why. 
uh, what all we have to do is to remember that it's about 5% of sessions uh, for, for this website. But when I look on the very right side to the performance part of it, um, when, when looking on the revenue uh, column, we can see that those tiny group of, of, of users, 5% generated 26% uh, of revenue. That's something I guess it's quite interesting and, and, and we should start looking on it. An even more uh, interesting part is uh, conversion rate. The sessions which do not use um, site search have about 1.2, the one who do use almost five, which means that the conversion rate of the, of the sessions which do use site search is four times higher than the ones who do not use that. And this is actually the very first use case, uh, how to work with this data. The first thing I would do is to start using this group of users for retargeting. Uh, probably most of you do use this technique for, for bringing your users back to your website. And we're trying to do that as effective as possible. So we're trying to look for the group of users which is more likely to convert instead of uh, trying to retarget all of the users. So this is a very good segment for retargeting. Um, so if I would would be the one to create the specific segment for, for that retargeting, it would be the group of users who used site search, but they haven't converted. As you probably know, it's a specific group of users because they are coming to our websites with already knowing what they probably want. So, so this is also why the conversion rate is so high and also the, the revenue share, which is 26%, is, is quite high. So this is the first quite interesting information. If we go to another report, which is tied to site search, it's about search terms. I will minimize that left tab. Uh, and I would say it's quite obvious. Uh, we'll see what are the most popular search terms which users are searching for. So in case of, of Google Merchandise Store, it's YouTube, Tour Jersey, Gopher, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this gives us the information, okay, these are the, the most interested search terms for our users. How to work with that? Number one would be, okay, uh, you should start thinking of it in a way, do I have relevant content for every search term that, that users are searching for? You don't have to do that in manual way because we have great metric telling us if we do have or we do not have uh, relevant content. It's search exits. It's quite similar to what um, bounce rate is because it tells us, okay, what's the volume of the sessions who searched for a particular search term and after seeing the results, they left. So in the case of the, of the number one search term, which is YouTube, 28% of, of those sessions who saw the results, um, Google Merchandise Store provides for a keyword YouTube, left. Then for Tour Jersey, 46% left immediately after seeing the search results. So the higher the number, probably the, the lower the relevance of the results we provide. So the first thing I would do here is to just go through, for example, top 50 search terms and, and look for what is highly above the average of search exits and try to find out why is it so and fix that. So this is number one thing I would do. Uh, the second one, the second metric, which is very, very good to understand what it tells us is the percentage of, of a search refinement. It basically means how often after searching for a particular search term, users are refining their, their um, searching query. So the higher the number, the higher the frequency in which people are searching for another keyword after seeing the results for the particular one. Uh, what is great here and available is that if we search, for example, for the one with quite higher search refinement rate, which is line number six, it's Chromecast. Let me do that. And what is great available here is the secondary dimension called refined keyword. This is it. And it tells me, okay, if someone was searching for the Chromecast, the most often refined keyword was Chromecast with the blank space, then Chrome, then Cast, Chromecast, and so on and so forth. So again, great, great information Google will, will allow us to see once we enable, enable that report. So um, what else do we have here or what, what we can do with this data? First thing I would do is to look for, for 
what are the most popular uh, search terms and if uh, in the case you're working with or you, you're a content website or a lead generation website what i would do is to is to look for okay do i have a content for these search terms if yes you're probably fine if not this is the great data source for knowing what content for what content your users are searching for and you should and and if you don't have it please start creating that this is what users are telling you okay i was searching for that content you probably don't have it on the website another great data available with uh, tied with site search data is when we switch from that tab site usage to e-commerce okay we are here and you probably know what we have what we what we have uh, available it's e-commerce data tied to search terms so if we just look on the very right side uh, the e-commerce conversion rate is something we want to be as high as possible so it tells us okay after searching for a particular search term what's the conversion rate of those sessions so the higher the better uh, how to work with this data first thing i would do is to look for something that has very high conversion rate which in this case are stickers and start to thinking of it, okay, shouldn't I promote this one a bit more? Maybe put those products to my homepage since they have very good conversion rate. So this was, would be one of the things I would start to do. Another one would be to look for something with very high con conversion rate and maybe start your, your bidding, for example, in Google Ads um, to start bid for that particular keyword. Since it has very good conversion rate on your website, so I can imagine that also another bunch of the people are searching for that exactly that exact particular keyword outside your website. So why not bring them to your website and make them convert since the ones who are searching for that keyword on your website are converting. So I would say uh, I didn't uh, discover anything new, but just very nice scenario how to use this great, great data, I would say. And also another example is, for example, line number nine, which is ingress. I literally have no idea what this is, but I can see that, there, that the conversion rate is zero. Uh, after having 150 searches, comparing to the average conversion rate, it's, it's 3%. Zero uh, doesn't look that well. So I would try to inspect what can be wrong with, with ingress or what with the results after seeing the, after searching the for, for the ingress uh, search term. So uh, going back to, to site usage, we, we probably all understand this report. And the last one we have, which will complete what we have available in GA when it comes to uh, search data is search pages. The primary dimension here, here is a start page. And it tells us, okay, what is, what is the number one uh, or what are the pages at which users are mostly using internal search engine? It's quite obvious that it's most of the time homepage. So what I want to show you right now that another great information available in GA is that if I will filter for only one page to show you what I mean, I will search for homepage. And if I right now would use secondary dimension search term, perfect. I see here, okay, this is the information I have here is uh, what are the most search search terms? <laughs> nice combination uh, at particular websites. So this tells me, okay, number one of, of uh, search terms are that users are searching for Chromecast on the homepage. So we have also that tight information. What is the most searched keyword on on uh, on particular website? Great information. How to use that? It's quite obvious that that most of the people will, pro will probably use internal search engine on or search engine on the homepage. But if if that wouldn't be the case of the homepage, but for example another page where you wouldn't expect it that often. Uh, my first in interpretation for seeing uh, some high volume of, of search terms on the on the non homepage pages uh, would be okay users were probably searching for particular content or, or the information they couldn't find it there there so they were searching for a search term hoping that we have this information somewhere else so i would start or, or i would try to think whether whether they weren't searching for something that was supposed to be on that website and we don't have it so if this is the case the easiest thing to do is to, is to put that information to 
particular website. So uh, that was it, guys. That was a couple of examples. What is what will start to appear in your Google Analytics account if you enable site search data. From my opinion, this is great report, great data, providing a lot of insights. We can start to use it for retargeting, as we showed, for starting a bidding, fixing the, the results we have, uh, we currently pr provide for our users or trying to changing, for example, information architecture. Uh, maybe I will go back right now for a second to the previous re report because that was one of the things I wanted to show you when it comes to search terms. Uh, very good information specifically for the content uh, websites or the lead generation. It basically tells you what your users are searching for and it's a great source for, for example, changing your information architecture, maybe to put some of that keywords uh, into your navigation because uh, most of the users are searching for it or to use it as a content plan for your SEO strategy because your users are telling you, okay, this is what I'm searching for. Maybe try to create a content for it. So these were a couple of examples how I would use or I'm using the data I'm having for, for, from that um, dedicated search, uh, site search report. So hope you enjoyed it, guys, and see you next time. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can utilize the internal search feature for Google Analytics. If you liked this video and it helped you out, then we'd appreciate if you hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to find out more about uh, reports inside of Google Analytics, then check out this video where I show you my favorite Google Analytics report. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time.